Hello YouTube, this is Quantum Blondes. Welcome to another themed Baldur's Gate 3 build. This time we are balancing the Shadow Daughter under the shadowy moon with Shadow Strike. Yes. Build disclaimer, this is not a min-max OP build. It will be difficult to play at first, but it will be fun for those interested in a different take on the beloved emo goth girlfriend mommy and the mobility of the way of the shadow subclass is actually pretty fun uh, it's worth noting though that the open hand monk is stronger and it offers a lot more control more CC more damage um, versus the way of the shadows utility and mobility um, and shadow monk is better going off with four and thief but we're going 11 uh, for strictly just for shadow blade um, we just want Shadow Heart to Shadow Strike with either her Shadow Spear or Conjure Shadow Blade. So we need either. We need 11 levels of uh, Shadow Monk. Plus, all the times I'm going to say Shadow in this video is kind of crazy. Uh, if you want a better DPS version, I got one by a YouTube channel called Doors and Dice. And another one by uh, Firespark81. I have a, uh, a Sakura build by uh, Jason Dunna as well, in case you want to keep Shadowheart a cleric. Um, you can make your Tav Sakura, and you can still run this build, so that's kind of cool. So firstly, why Shadowheart? Well, someone told me I should romance Shadowheart as a gift, which is kind of interesting if you know how she feels about them. Even though Lazel is the Emerald Goddess of Dragons and Swords and the simplest of love with the passion of one million sons. There's going to be a little bit of Shadow Heart spoilers ahead. Mute and I'll uh, tell you when you can unmute. But I'll make a caption and put it on the screen since your sound won't be on. Okay, go. Anyways, Shadow Heart becomes a Way of the Shadow Monk after becoming conflicted emotionally and in a very dramatic way. After betraying Shar and sparing the night song, she seeks to live in Shar's shadow. She traveled to a monk monastery, ran by the black shadow, and truly discovered nothing about itself. It changed nothing because she's not the problem. Shar is. Now as a monk, fighting with Selene's spear of night and the shadow blade ring, she's an assassin daughter set out to kill the remaining daughters of Shar as redemption for her past. Like an Ouroboros, yeah, snake eating itself. She's just a little confused. And also, I'm not trying to make her appear dumb. I'm just trying to make her appear more interesting. Since she's going to be a monk instead of a healer, you won't have a healer. So if you need a healer, you should keep your healer at camp. Check out this camp companion build I tweaked. Consists of a... a medical alchemist lore bard so I'll put that um, in the description below too so you can check that out before we get into the build and the breakdown let's look at the uh, one level the one level dips you guys can take most accurate uh, multi-class pick uh, trickery cleric and you'll be able to disguise self charm person and blessings of the trickster disguise self you can transform into all of these which is good for like getting into the tiny holes if you need to get into tiny holes you can charm people and get advantage on charisma checks and dialogue and then you can grant another creature uh, advantage on um, stealth so this multi-class tip is definitely the uh, most lore accurate. Choosing cleric and picking the nature domain will allow you to get to speak with animals, animal friendship, and thorn whip. It's my personal favorite. And if you choose war domain cleric, here, I have to get into a fight to show you. Makes a fight. 
with War Priest uh, for picking the War Domain Cleric. You can make an additional melee attack with your equipped weapons, so that's one thing to uh, keep in mind when multi-class. You can add Sorcerer and pick up spells like Shield, uh, Fog Cloud's a good one, or Magic Missile to get some reach and pick Storm Sorcery so you can get Tempestuous Magic after you cast a level 1 spell like, you know, Shield or anything like that level 1 spell you can cast Fly as a bonus action, so think about it you someone gets in range tries to hit you it activates Shield increase your armor class by 5 you dodge and then you're able to fly. So if it's like Raphael or something, you can like get out of there if you need to. Or if you just need a reposition. Another interesting caster you can pick is Warlock. Because you'll get some cantrips like Eldritch Blast. And uh, you can get Bone Chill if you want. Um, you're not going to have a lot of charisma. But uh, it's something. You can pick up Armor of uh, Agathus and Arms of Hader or Hadar with um, the Dark One's Blessing so that would be probably really good for this class considering um, you know you're going to be in melee range a lot and she's not a healer anymore so she's going to need a way to heal herself so yeah like I said or if you don't want Arms of Hadar you can get I mean, Hex is interesting. I mean, you're not going to have a lot of charisma, like I said. Hellish Rebuke. I mean, you're mainly just doing this just so you can get Eldritch Blast for some reason. And mainly for Armor of Agathas. Because you can get that at um, level 1. And I mean, it's, it's not the best, but... Warlock uh, spell slots, I believe, scale with the level. Another interesting um, mention is definitely the fighter class, or you can get second wind. Um, you get all these proficiencies, but you're not going to be wearing armor. Um, so you could probably just go with gray weapon fighting, armor, or even protection. Or no, no, no. Yeah, just gray weapon fighting, I guess. Because <laughs> you're going to be using a spear. But. Fighter level two is what you would, what you would really want. But for this build, uh, it's only a one level dip, so I don't know. Do you really want? I mean, do you do you really want second win? You're not going to get action surge with this build, so plan accordingly. Just go ahead and pick. Uh, the best level 1 class features you can think of for you would personally like for your own Shadow Bay. Uh, yeah. You can't do this combo, but I can. Yeah, we're gonna have to respec anyway, so. Alright, let's go ahead and talk to Withers to respec. Fate, dost thou require a new path yes. thou desire? And. I know Salune isn't nature domain, she's actually um, knowledge in life, but I like going nature because you can get thorn whip. And then replace sacred flame with produce flame, because sacred flame needs a dex save. Um, I like I was talking about earlier, yeah you can go with triggery domain to make it uh, feel more real, but I like going uh, nature, picking that. This is my idea of Salune's natural blessing of balance to a shadow sister of Shar, so like, that's what the theme is. Shadow Heart's kind of confused by the highest level of wisdom, and that's going to be her going, becoming, a, going from a cleric to a monk. So. She's like, it's it's just shadow now. 
Something like that. Some crazy crap. Alright. Now, for stats, we want the plus two in wisdom. And then we want dexterity. Put strength at 10. It'll give you a plus zero to checks, but, you know, that kind of sounds um, like it, it, it makes sense for Shadowheart. And you can drink elixirs anyway. Um, we're going to dump charisma and intelligence down to zero so she's not going to be very smart or very like good with words um if you want the hag if you're going to do the hags hair like if you're going to play like an origin um put it at 17 but since it's just a companion we're just going to um since she's not going to get a hags hair we're just going to put that at 16 and dex at 16 and then constitution she could just sit at 15 i mean if you really want, you can raise this to, to 10, I guess, but I don't know. That's up to you. Um, for proficiencies, just pick history, nature. Um, you can drop medicine if you want and put it into persuasion since medicine's already kind of high. And then that this will give you more balanced um, stats. More balanced proficiencies for Shadowheart. The two feats we're going to get are um, both ASIs. We're going to increase um, Wisdom to 20. Normally you wouldn't... You would go Dexterity if you want more damage, more initiative, and more AC, but I like going Wisdom just to be a little different. And... It's, uh, it's, it's, it's good for perception. Now, one to note, I'm going to level two, but we're not going to cleric. Remember, we're going to monk. If you're doing an honor mode and you're playing this character, I would start at level one. Or not, not even if you're playing the character, just if you're doing honor mode, I would do level her up monk to level four first. Because that's the fastest way you can get a feat. And you want to get your first feat as fast as possible. <clears throat> in this game. Um, but yeah. So now we're going to go to level 1 monk. We get flurry of blows. Which costs 1 key point. 8 to 14 damage. We also get unarmored defense. Which adds your wisdom to your armor class. Dexterous attacks. This works with uh, the spear, it, and that just adds your dexterity instead of strength. That's why we were able to just put strength at 10. You don't really need a dump strength because you don't want a negative strength. So I just put it at 10, so it's, you know, at a zero. Um, death strikes, doesn't really matter. Unarmed strike, uh, you get a bonus unarmed strike after making an attack with a monk weapon or while unarmed. You can make another unarmed attack as a bonus action. And then we're going to get simple weapon proficiency, which kind of covers our butt with the uh, spear route that we're taking. Monk level 2, we get another key point, we get 3 extra movement, and then we get 3 class actions, patient defense. Attack rolls against you have disadvantage, and you have advantage on dexterity saving throws, which is like getting tripped or anything, so that's pretty good. Um, step of the wind dash it's pretty much just a, you get a, a bonus action dash kind of like how rogues get it same thing with addition gauge level 3 way of the open hand is the strongest but we go um, way of the shadow and with it we're going to get a bonus action to hide we're going to get two key points and we can do pass without a trace. The ability calls forth a veil of shadows and silence that gives you and all nearby companions a plus 10 bonus to stealth. That's interesting. Now I'm just reading it. I didn't notice that it, um, I didn't know it does a veil of silence too. I thought it was just shadows. So that's really good. Then you can cast darkness, which is good if you're doing like a darkness, uh, uh, themed build uh, like team composition she gets dark vision 
a hundred turns of silence, which is really nice, comes in handy. And then a minor illusion, which is good for like grouping enemies up if you want to clump them all up in your darkness. The main reason we go Shadow Monk 2 is for the mobility. And here's one of the mobility things we get. When you fall, you can use your reaction to gain resistance to falling damage. So that's pretty cool. It's a nice little slow fall that monks get. And we get our feet, which I said we're going to do wisdom. If you want to min-max, I would choose dexterity because this will make you hit harder. Um, but wisdom also has its benefits too. Monk level 5. Uh, we're getting some more health. Another key point, and now we get our extra attack, which is nice. And we get um, 3 more actions. Now we can stun, we can use an ability to stun, so like I was saying earlier, the open hand monk can prone, and it has a lot of control. Um, this is the real only control ability um, way the shadow monks get, um, but this is just, this is a monk action in general. Um, and then we get um, Cloak of Shadows as well. So we can, uh, it's pretty much like a free invisibility. Monk level 6, we get key empowered strikes. So now they count as magical, overcoming um, enemies resistance and immunity to non-magical damage. Um, and we get shadow step. This ability is really fun to play with on this build. If you haven't played away the shadow monk, you should just for that ability because it's kind of fun. Evasion, your agility lets you dodge out of the way of certain spells and when a spell or effect would deal half damage on a successful deck saving throw, it deals no damage if, if you succeed and only half if you fail. So that's that's pretty good. Um, covers your butt from getting hit. There's another reason why I kind of like um, Shadow Heart as a monk. Uh, other people like her as a cleric. I just feel like, you know, it's nice having a monk in the party. You also get stillness of mind. If you're charmed or frightened, you can automatically cast this as an action and it'll remove the condition. So, covers you from charm and frighten. It's pretty good. Monk level 8, we're going to get another feat. It's going to be ability improvement to get this to 20, mainly for that plus 5 to wisdom check. We want to have this build um, set up with the most amount of wisdom we can. Um, we're going to get um, unarmored movement, so as long as we're not wearing armor or using a shield, um, uh, we can we can move an extra six feet or meters. So this build is very mobile. Alright, monk level 10, we get purity of body, where you're basically immune to poison. Then our movement and speed increases by another 6. So you're going to have a lot of movement. A lot of movement with this build. Monks have, like, the best movement. Apart from, um, rogues, but... Alright, now monk level 11, this is why we even made our build this funky to begin with. 1 and 11 is kind of weird, but... Level 12 Monk, Shadow Monk, doesn't really give you much. So the only thing this class really has to offer is the Shadow Strike. And if you really wanted to go Shadow Monk, I would actually recommend going with Thief subclass. So you would need 4 levels in Rogue to do that. 8 levels in Monk. So you wouldn't be able to do Shadow Strike, but you would get an extra bonus action. And that kind of works out with Monks. So Shadow Strike is a it's a teleport action. You have to be hiding to do it, but it does 3d8 damage. And you can do it with a weapon or unarmed. So let me just quickly go over the gear. For weapon you're gonna want the Salune Spear of the Night. You won't get that until a certain thing 
happens, but when you get it, um, it goes good with this monk build because it's kind of interesting seeing Shadow Heart with, you know, a spear and a monk. I gave her the horns of the Berserker, um, which gives her a uh, bonus to attack rolls when attacking creatures that have taken damage already. Uh, extra necrotic damage, and she takes necrotic damage at the end of her turn. But at the start of her turn, she gets health 1d4, so it kind of negates it. 1d4 necrotic, 1d4 hit points. I also like to pick up the gloves of missile snaring. Just for a little bit of added defense, because I don't want her getting hit by ranged attacks. I'll get the bone spike boots, um, and all all these uh, items I'll put the links for in the description. But um, this is good; it gives you a nice little jump, and you have a bonus to armor class as long as you're not wearing armor, which is what you should not be doing. <coughs> We have the Deathstalker Mantle. Now the only way you can get this is if your Tav is a Dark Urge. So if you don't have a Dark Urge, I think I think I had one that causes reverberation. Yeah, this one. When a creature with reverberation deals damage to the wearer, something like that would be nice. Or maybe Cloak of Displacement. That would be nice, it's just hard to hit you. I just have her with this one so she can go invisible after she kills. And that'll um, enable her to do another shadow strike if she needed to. But the other um, item, you have to you get it from uh, saving Arabella's parents. But it's this ring that um, every short rest... Yeah, I can't do it now. Short rest. And then she gets this um, shadow blade. Right now that's in her hand instead of the uh, Spear of Char. This does 5 to 19 damage, 2d8 plus 3 psychic damage. Um, so now a lot of things uh, resist that. And you have advantage on attack rolls against lightly or heavily. Uh, uh, obscured targets when using this blade, so that's cool to counteract the uh, not being able to see thing. Uh, let's see. Guys, darkness over there. They don't even know I did it. Can I teleport? Oh, no, no. I didn't tell if you're in a lightly obscured area. Come and quiet, that's the way. Oh. See, and then I can just go in here into this darkness. Let's see what I can see. And then. Shadow strike if I want. I feel like she didn't even see it. I can do some silence right here. So now she can't even hear anything. But she knows I did that. So yeah. There's tons of things you can do with this build. Um, like I said, it's not a min-max build, it's just a uh, kind of thematic build. Let's see if um, we can get a... Uh, got her a little more interesting than the Cleric. I mean, I, I don't mind the Cleric uh, thing. I, I guess I just wanted to try something different. And this build helped you out. Uh, it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe and like the video. Uh, if you like these build weird off the wall build videos I do, I try to do different b videos that you know, 
but aren't the um, the meta. I just try to get creative with it because that's you know that's what D and D is about. So that's it for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.